Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Very excited about today. This broadcast. All right. Just doing the needful. All right, we're good over there. Perfect. We are going to. Okay, we are good on Facebook, YouTube. Study up Instagram. <laughs> what up? All right. What up, everybody? Oh, <laughs> promise you, I got this. <laughs> I promise you, I got this. <laughs> we won't flip that camera. <laughs> Anyways, welcome everyone on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. We are definitely, we are getting started right now. Um, see some people are coming in, but anyways, we're just going to go. All right. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that as this word is going forth, as this broadcast, Lord God, what it's titled and Lord God, the content and just the word, everything, Lord God, that it definitely resonates with people that father God, it becomes a light <laughs> unto people's path. Lord God, it literally, it causes people's paths, Lord God, to receive light in the name of Jesus. I ask the father God, that this will be one of those make it plain type of messages. One in which someone's like, ah, I understand what she's saying. One in which someone's like, not only do I understand, I know what I need to do. There's an action, there's an execution that'll take place. So I thank you for that. Receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless everybody. Thank you again for joining. My name is Eno. Very, very excited for tonight's broadcast. Excited for all y'all who are you know with me here live and everyone who's gonna come on the replay so i'm excited about that as well um oh, okay um maybe i'm supposed to supposed to wait like 20 more seconds maybe i'm i'm, I'm kind of like just ready to go so i'm gonna wait 20 more seconds but it's all good Do -do -do. <laughs> I'm like ready to go. <laughs> awesome. All right. It's all good. Again, this will be up, so it's all good. Um, let me lower this. And I'm gonna just have like a for real, I don't know, conversation, talk, what have you. Uh, I always give the disclaimer, like, oh yeah, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but um, we're just going to go with the flow, right? Flow of the Holy Spirit. I titled this particular broadcast, What is Going On, right? Um, and it's revival. It's definitely, it is revival. Revival is going on. Revival is taking place. Revival is what is happening, which is why some of the events are taking place. You know, someone is looking around that's like they're not looking with their like you know spiritual binoculars they may be like wait this is happening that's happening this is taking place that's taking place you know is this is that is that it's revival we're we're actually we're in revival praise god so the reason why i am again i am bringing this up um ooh, lower this the reason why i'm bringing this up is because it's important to know right? It's important to know what time and what season that you're in. 
so that you know like how to like flow, what you're supposed to do, what God is calling you to do, what, how, you know, what role you're going to play. It's just important to know, for instance, um, for instance, if God is calling me into a season of like, I want you to rest, right? I want you to just chill. Then it's going to, I'm not going to be so pressed to try to do too much because God is like, I want you, I want you to rest. I really, really want you to rest. Praise God. Um, and it, it gives me rest because it's like, I know exactly what's going on. So I don't need to do too much. An example of this is I remember one time God had called me into a season of rest, a time of rest, just to take it easy. Um, he wanted me to just take time to study, to just read up on his word. He wanted me to just ah, relax. And by doing so, I knew that he wanted me to rest because what was going to take place next in the next season, I need, it's like, it's like almost resting even before you actually go on a trip. I, I hope that makes sense to somebody. Anyways, um, what's going on? Again, we're in revival. Revival is taking place. And um, I have the scripture that I love that I wrote down. It comes from First Chronicles 12, 32. Again, naming the season that we're in, revival. It says, and of the children of Issachar, which were men, right, that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So this was a tribe, right, that had understanding of the times and seasons and the action that's supposed to take place. So it's like, all right, if this is, for instance, revival, then this is cool, right? This is awesome. But then there's the other part. They know what they're supposed to do in this revival. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, so now that we've established that there's a revival taking place, we're in revival. There's some people, many people that already knew this, right? There's some people that have kind of known this. They're just like, okay. And there's some people that are coming to the realization like, okay, this is really revival. And then there's some people who have been running with it that have had this understanding. And it's like, of course we are. We've been in this. Praise God. Anyways, continuing on, we're in revival. Um, what is revival? I wrote this down because it's important to know not only the season you're in, but what the season you are in, right? So you know what you're supposed to do. Revival, I just wrote this down by, by the spirit. Revival is what? Revival is awakening. Awakening that is taking place, right, of God's sons and daughters, right? Uh, 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 the ones that, hallelujah, may have left are coming back, praise God. Um, the ones that have been sleeping, right, are woken up like, oh my gosh, my goodness, was that, how long was I asleep? I got to get up. That's taking place. And, and the ones that maybe weren't in position are now getting in position, meaning that they're getting in alignment with his spirit. All of that is taking place right now during revival. The other thing that's taking place during revival is there is a discarding of idols, right? There is a discarding of idols and there is a return back to God that's also taking place as well, which is why I love this season. And it's a season that, um, I mean, it definitely had already started, but we're the best way to put it is we're in the beginnings and the beginnings already had started, but it's like, you know how you see um, certain events it's like those events are even marking the beginnings of the revival. Oh my goodness, y'all. Oh my gosh. All right. So continuing on. The other thing about what is happening in the revival is it's not that there's division that's taking place. There is a distinction that's taking place between, say, the wheats and the tares. There's a distinction that's taking place between those who are for God and those who are, I'm sorry, you know, not for God, I'm just keeping it real. There's a distinction that's taking place. And there's also a consecration that is sweeping across the land. I'm like, this is so cool, right? And so 
with a lot of the events, like if we're looking at the past week, week and a half that has transpired, oh my goodness. Someone may, someone may be like, wait, what is this or what is that and whatnot? And maybe just looking at the event, but God is like, that event is actually marking the season. It's like, he's like, I'm showing you through this isolated event what is taking place, what season we're in. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He's so good. The other thing that's happening during this revival is there is a demonstration of the acts of the apostles. Whoop. My God. Oh, you guys give me a moment right now. I'm getting really stirred. There's a demonstration of the acts of the apostles. There's a demonstration of God's church, his original, his church, how he designed it. There is a demonstration that will take place in which we'll see God's power. We'll see more of his power literally at large. Just it's happening, right? It's already happening. We'll see the miracles. We'll see the signs. We'll see the wonders. We'll see the, you know, calling out, you know, of uh, anyone who is, um, you know, uh, uh, causing, what is it, like Jezebel, right? Calling out Jezebel from any form of wickedness that they're doing. We're going to see a lot of these amazing things because we're in revival. We're literally, we're in revival. The other thing that I also noticed about what is happening in this revival is God is delivering. I had to write this down because this is so good. God is delivering his children from the spirit of compromise. God is delivering his children, praise God, from the spirit of compromise. Oh my God, hallelujah. Okay. This is a word that has been definitely floating around, right? The internet right now. And I kid you not, all of the things I'm talking about, I was going to talk about them like separate, but I think God wants me to kind of like bring it together, almost like a smorgasbord, like talk about all these different, all these different points because they're all interrelated. So compromise. Um, there's many definitions for the spirit of compromise because it's a spirit. And the best way to describe it is like this. Some people, when they think of the word compromise, they think of like the positive part, like let's come to a compromise, right? Let's come to an agreement, right? However, the negative tense, the negative tense of compromise is it's like it's going against. It's um, there's a damage that's taking place. There's a uh, it's destroying. There's a destruction that's taking place, like somebody compromising their relationship, right? Um, with their friends, somebody um, compromising, oh, this is so good, their values. They know they're not supposed to be, um, say, if they're a kid, you know, partaking in drug usage, but they're compromising their values as a kid. They shouldn't be getting involved with that. So all of these things are naming what compromise is. But God was really speaking to me about compromise. And I want to talk about this because he took me into Genesis 3, right? Genesis chapter 3, it's just about, I think, six verses. And it talks about compromise. He's like, give this example. It's going to resonate with someone. Someone's going to get it. So, all right. It says right here, it says, starting from verse 1, Genesis chapter 3. It says the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals um, the Lord God has made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say? Did God say? Did God really say? Did God say? You must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden. Verse 2. Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. He said, if you do, you will die. And verse four, you won't die. 
the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat, as you eat it, and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. Verse 6, the woman was convinced. The woman was convinced. It took all that and the woman was convinced, right? So he was telling me to use that example because they were giving clear instructions, you know, like, let's go to the beginning. They were giving clear instructions as to what they're not supposed to do, as what they're not supposed to touch, as what they're not supposed to eat. And here comes the serpent, Satan, who is a spirit, right, to bring this uh, conversation that causes Eve and then Adam to compromise their relationship that they have with God. Okay. God is delivering his children from the spirit of compromise during this revival. During this revival, he's causing his sons and his daughters to be able to examine themselves to look at themselves, to take note. Is there anywhere in my life that I have compromised? That I have compromised, that I have let in some that should not have gotten in, that I have um, gone against uh, shoot, the, the relationship that I have with the Lord. Is there anywhere where I have compromised? That is also what's taking place. And I thank God for, for that because one, it saved me. I'm going to give an example right now because I have to make sure I'm one of those people who I like to like cite my sources. I like to, you know, I know that it's coming from the Lord, but I like to let it be known. Like, yo, like if I heard it from somebody, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let y'all know I heard it from somebody. Right. And give context or give, you know, just, you know, Honor, where honors due. Praise God. So, I, <laughs> I'm talking about revival right now, but the event that took place, right, when I love her so much, Prophet Tiffany Montgomery, oops, Prophet Tiffany Montgomery, she, she, she released a warning, she released a rebuke, I like to call it, it was like <laughs> the rebuke that was heard around the world. Everybody heard it, literally everybody. I was like, whoa. And what I heard God was saying, even in that warning, right? I think everyone should know or have understanding of, of that is I need to examine myself. I need to literally, I need to examine myself. I need to make sure, is there anywhere where I'm compromising? my relationship with God? Is there anywhere where I'm, you know, you know what I mean? You feel me? Where it's kind of like, eh. and there may not be a lot of places, but I just, I have a relationship with God. So I'll just ask questions and God will let me know, like over here, for instance, let's see, we're in February right now. I remember in December, there were some things that were say in my house, right? Things that I'm like, this is not a big deal. These are just clothes. These are just things. And I literally, I had to let them go. And these aren't cheap things. These aren't cheap things. And I remember when I was throwing out one of the items, I literally, I was starting to cry. I was starting to cry and I had to start like speaking in tongues. It was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, you know, and I had to like tell myself and speaking aloud, like, we're going to get you a new thing. We'll get you a new book. Okay. There won't be anything attached to this one. I promise. And I had to literally toss these things in a dumpster, walk away. And when I tell you, it was like, there was a grieving, whatever that thing, that loss that took place. But at the same time, there was like this, I just felt like invigorated, like, wow. There's, I can really let go of something if God tells me to let it go. I can really um, surrender to the spirit of God 
And even though it may be like, ah, it's like, it feels good at the same time. Like, cause it's like, God can trust me. I think that's what I'm trying to say. God can trust me. Right. So where I'm going with this is there's revival that's taking place. And all these things that I'm mentioning, God has to make sure for those that are a part is of, of this revival, for those of you who are sons and daughters, because God wants all his children be active in this revival. He wants every single person literally to get active. Like, yo, I can use Tiffany. I can use um, Rebecca. I can use Dre. I can use um, Monica. I can use Tammy. I can use Uchi. I can use Chioma. I can use Wei Luna. I can use all my kids. But what I'm getting from this is God can literally use us, right? Because now there's nothing that is in the way. There's nothing that he's like, man, oh, this person is still holding on to this. You know what I mean? There's none of that. It's this person is surrendered so I can use them during this revival. Oof. Other things I wanted to mention, praise God. Pay attention, even though some of the events that we are seeing, like say in the world, um, in the nation, even in the media, in entertainment, social media, still see God in some of those events so that you don't say get caught up like in the event, but get caught up in what is God doing in this event? What is God saying about this event? I, I, I'm trying to understand, God, this is something that's like a wow, but God, what am I supposed to take? Thank you, Lord, from this event. Praise God. Other things I notice about what's going on in this revival is even other aspects of the media, right? I think that this is the first time, and I'm looking at the past 30 plus years of my life, because I've watched a lot of TV, right? I've watched a lot of movies where I'm seeing Jesus coming in the media. Like he's like, it's like almost being like reintroduced. He's like, yo, I'm here, right? Almost giving everyone an opportunity to get to know him. For example, for those of you who know me, I'm a Chosen fan. I am. I, I, I tell everybody, you can tell by, you know, if you look at my stories, you're going to see me promoting The Chosen. I just found out about The Chosen. I just actually started watching The Chosen. I feel like I, I got to talk about this. Um, at the end of October, and I remember end of October, 2022, I was going through, it was one of those like, you know, you're passing through certain things. And I remember I started watching it. I, it just, I was sitting on my couch and the Holy Spirit was just like The Chosen. I'm just like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah. And so I literally went and I started watching The Chosen and I binge watched it for the first time, October, 2022. And that was how God was pulling me back, right? Pulling me back through the media, praise God. Why I'm bringing this up, a month later um, in November, when The Chosen was coming out with season three and they moved to the uh, theaters, it was something that, what never had been done before, not like that, not for a show, not for like a show. It's like, hey, we're going to take this show literally on the road. And the reason why that's so significant was it literally, it caused a disruption because it, it was showing people that the world literally needs Jesus. And I saw, you know, it literally just made a dent in the box office. I saw people excited about it. I saw people talking about it. I saw people raving about it to the point where other people are like, yo, what's the chosen? What's the chosen? Because of what it was doing. Praise God. I'm bringing this up because we are in revival. And I knew even during that time that we're in revival because it was taking place in the media. I'm like, when has it been that this is a TV show? This is a TV show. And this particular TV show has disrupted the movie industry, disrupted media, praise God. And then when we had the last two episodes, episode seven and eight, which was at the beginning of February, same thing, 
Praise God. Hallelujah. All these movies that are coming out on revival. Oh my goodness. I'm like, yo, hello. There's uh, what is it? Jesus Revolution. Hey, Rue, what's up, lady? There's Jesus Revolution that's taking place. Um, I think it's like next week, right? Next month. There's the other movie. I think it's called uh, what is it? Come out in Jesus' name. Like, I'm like, ah, I said, ah, America. You are letting us know that revival is not, like revival is for real, for real. It is now. It's now. It's literally, it's now. Where am I going with this? Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because it's important to keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing during this revival, during how things are going, during all of this is Jesus. Praise the Lord, right? The main thing is not to get unfocused, to get distracted, to get caught up in different things and, you know, how the enemy, even though there's a God move taking place, not to let any schisms come in because God is moving. And it's, it's like, don't be distracted. There's revival that's taking place in the colleges, right? There's revival taking place in the colleges, Praise God in universities. We're seeing it on the news. People are like, wow, there's a revival that's been going on literally for like over a week now. This is something we haven't seen. Praise God. So what God is saying right now is you can be a part of this revival. You, hallelujah, can be a part of this revival. I can be a part of this revival. And how are we being part of this revival? One, ask God to use you. God, what role do you want me to play in this revival? What do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Is there anything that I need to, I don't know, get rid of or whatnot or whatnot? Because I want to make sure that as I step out, as I go and I do, you know, your work. Let me turn this heater down. Praise God. Ain't nothing going to hold me back. Just ask God. I think that's just, it's as simple as that. God, what do you want me to do? You want me to share the word? You want me to share the word with my neighbor? You want me to, like, just ask him and he'll tell you. Like he's told me. I knew I was going to have to do a live sometime this week. I'm keeping it real. <laughs> I was just looking at, okay. Let me fit this in. Let me do this. Let me do that. I just came from work. <laughs> I just came from work. <laughs> the only reason why I started a little bit later was I just got a new dog. And the dog is like, literally, it's a puppy. Super cute. I love him. But all of that to say, I needed to make sure I was obedient and I did this because this is also a part of revival. It is obeying God, even when it may inconvenience you. Even if it's like... God, eh, I just came back from work. No, 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 no. Even if, who, it, it's like, it's one of those, like, we're in a time where, I'm trying to just explain it. We haven't been in before. Thank you, Rue. Revival's now. We, we're in a time we haven't been in before because this revival is not going to be like ones we've seen in the past. It's not going to be like the ones we've seen in the past. I remember um, when I was doing all my history and research and whatnot on past revivals, I remember that quote. I know some of y'all have seen it by William Seymour. He said that, yo, 100 years from now, there's going to be another revival. It's going to be even greater than the one that took place during Azusa Street. And that revival is going to continue all the way until when Jesus comes. We're now, it's now, yo, let me be cool. It's right now. And so because sons of Ishakar are able to know the times and the seasons, all right, now we know it's survival. The next thing is, what do you want me to do? God will tell you what he wants you to do. God will literally tell you. I feel like this is like um, step one, right? And literally God is like, all right, now I'm going to do, I feel like this is like 
what someone needed to hear so that they can now start and take a step. They can now go and take a step and get active and, and, and get to work because revival is now. Because this, what we're seeing right now, we haven't seen this before. We haven't experienced this before. I was, um, <laughs> Jesus have mercy. I was just thinking, right? I'd be thinking, I have conversations with the Holy Spirit. When has it been, you know, excuse me, how many times has, say, somebody, you know, say, warn people about, hey, don't partake in this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. I was even thinking about myself. I said, you know, you've been doing this broadcast for almost three years. How many times have you, you know, talked to people, warned people, said whatever, right? But for some reason, God is like, now, not only am I going to send the fear of God out into the airwaves, right? I'm going to let y'all know, like, I'm coming for your idols. Praise God. And idols, right? For, so there's distinction is anything that is being put before God. So an idol isn't just, you know, someone wants to say, is it a, a person? It can be an inanimate object. So the best way to look at it is like, you need to search your heart to make sure I'm not making an idol. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm trying to look for some that I can just throw up over here. Anyways, I need to make sure I'm not using, I'm not making this right into an idol or I'm not making, what is it? What is this? Right? I'm not making this into an idol. It's not. It's just cream. Right? May sound funny, like, okay, it's just cream, but he doesn't want anything, right? Dead or alive to literally get in the way. He's like, yo, I need you. I need you. I need you. And I need you. I don't want none of that stuff in the way. Like, let's keep the main thing, the main thing, which is Jesus. Hallelujah. Revival is now. Praise God. That's my message. That's my message. I feel like this is, like I said, a part, like it's like, here's this part one and the next part, I feel like God is going to add more instructions. So just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Let him lead you. Just talk to him. This is a very exciting time. I'm like, yo, we here, we here now, right? But please, please, please don't <sighs> treat this time like it's other times. Don't. Look at it like, oh, those revivalists over there, they got it covered. Or those evangelists, she got it covered. He got it covered. No, God is like, I need you. I need you as well. Praise God. Hold on. I'm going to attempt to bring this puppy on camera, okay? Hold on a second. I'm going to attempt to bring this, bring this, come up over here. Sorry, this this dog is like for real, like a baby. Like it was crying earlier. I'm like, yo, hold on a second. Come on, get up here. Get up here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. All right. And now comes the oohs and the ahs. Max, say hello to the world. Hello, world. All right. He's a cute one. Anyways, I love you guys. Have a great night. Revival is for real now. Shout out to Apostle Catherine Crick. All right. <laughs> Shout out to her with her eagle eye. I was able to see it. We're here now. So God bless you guys. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> people love you bags i should have had you up the whole time <laughs> <laughs>